So, the banter club out bantered all the banter we've had for the last decade by not signing anyone on deadline day. Can you believe it? I can, because I predicted it. Sick and tired of being taken for a mug by this football club. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today to have a little look over what we did or didn't do yesterday, and then compare that to the other teams around us. So, Lucas Perez, we'll start with him. Don't quite understand why we even signed this guy last summer. Um, oh, yes, I do. It's because we were being cheap skates. So we thought we'd go for somebody cheap that no one had ever heard of because we couldn't be asked to go and chase a big target. There we go. Anyway, last summer, he was our record striker signing at £16 million. That was the most we'd ever paid for a striker. One year later, we're loaning him back to the club that we signed him from for four million pounds. Hmm, that worked out. Is that Arson admitting defeat? Is that admitting he's wrong? Who knows? Let's move on to Joel Campbell. Another one that's still at the club that's been loaned out to Real Betis. Feel a little bit sorry for Joel Campbell because do you know what? A few years ago at Stoke train station, them fans were nailed on. Get out while you can, Joel. But he's on loan again. Onwards and upwards. Alexi Sanchez stayed. Yay! Obviously I covered the Ox yesterday. So I'm not even going there. Alexi Sanchez stayed. Now we're going to find out what Alexi Sanchez is made of. And what Alexi Sanchez thinks of Arsene Wenger and his teammates. There's a lot of reports coming out today. That he's angry by the decision not to have been sold. Um, and there's a lot of conflicting stuff that he didn't want to go, then he did want to go, then he didn't want to go. So, in the next coming weeks and months, we're going to see what Alexi Sanchez is, is thinking, really. Um, we're we're going to hopefully see the Alexi Sanchez that we've seen for the most part of his three years at Arsenal. The Alexi Sanchez that you and everybody else and myself has looked at and thought, wow, what a fantastically gifted footballer. Absolute joy to watch the geezer week in, week out. So, hopefully we get that Alexis Sanchez, and not the Alexis Sanchez that was sat on the bench laughing at 4-0. Because if that's the case, that could have massive repercussions to this squad and to this football club. Somebody that has gone under the radar, that nobody's speaking about, is Mr. Mesut Ozil. He divides opinion more than me. And that's saying saying. Half of the fan base want to kill me, the other half worship me. There we go. Mesut Ozil, two months ago, come out and said, I love the football club and I want to stay. I love being in London. I love the club. I want to sign a new contract. Well, if that's the case, my friend, how comes two months later you still ain't signed? But it's all right, because he'll get a free pass because he's Mesut Ozil. Nah. The Spanish transfer window is still open today. So, let's see if he stays. Anyway, Mustafi, another one linked with a move. Was he going? Wasn't he going? If he wasn't going, why was he dumped on the bench at Liverpool? Who knows? Only Arsene Wenger can tell you that. And he probably can't even give you an answer. There we go. He stayed. Am I happy that he stayed? Yes. Because personally, in my opinion, I think he is the best centre-back at the club. You can quote Koscielny at me all you like. I don't rate Koscielny. Um, he's a good defender, but he's not a leader. He panics too much and gives away way too many penalties. And the fact that he's 32 this month, we need a replacement. So I'm glad Mustafi has stayed. Because if he had gone, then we were royally fucked in defence. Anybody else? Jack Wilshere. Jack Wilshere, another one more talent than 90% of footballers in England. Just never get to see it. Um, one year left on his contract. There was a little rumour that came out yesterday about Birmingham City wanting him on loan. That never came through. Um, that's another one that's going to walk away for free or go in January. So, yeah, 
massive issues coming up in January and let's hope this all gets resolved because personally, this is doing my fucking Sweden. Anyway, on to that lot down the road. How did their transfer window go? Because apparently they're skin. Apparently they're building a new stadium. You know, we've gone through all this hardship. Everyone was laughing at them saying, yeah, well, we've had to go through it. Now Spurs are shafted. Well, Spurs yesterday signed Serge Aurier. They've basically replaced Kyle Walker straight away with arguably a better player. I would have had him. I would have taken him all day long at Arsenal. They brought in Davinson Sanchez. And although he's only had a couple of seasons in the top tier of football in the first team, I must say top tier, the Ajax aren't exactly the, the, the best team in the world. It's a shame because they used to be up there. Um, but now he's going to have a real test playing in the Premier League. From what I've seen, the kid is decent. But time will tell. But again, Pochettino's identified a couple of positions he needs to replace. He's gone out and he's done it. Um, they've also brought in Fernando Llorente. From under Chelsea's nose. He turned Chelsea down. Chelsea are champions. He turned them down. Wow. And all in all, with their outs, after getting rid of Kyle Walker, Bentaleb and Kevin Vimmer, how the fuck they got £18 million for Kevin Vimmer, I will never know. But they turned a profit as well. And they've got a little bit of a better backup now. Their first 11's decent anyway. We all know that. Whether you're the most ardent Arsenal fan on the planet, you've got to look at that lot and think, your team's actually pretty decent. But now, they've got decent backups on the bench. So, yeah, big season for Spurs. The only thing that will fuck them up is Wembley and themselves. Um, anyway, let's move on to the champions. Um, I know so many Chelsea fans, like literally most of my mates are Chelsea fans. Not one of them is happy with their transfer window. I know so many people on Twitter that are Chelsea that follow me. Not many of them are happy. What are they moaning about? I'd love to swap with Chelsea. Two titles in three years. I would take that all day long. Their players that they've brought this summer. Yes, they've, yes, they've brought in Morata, which is massively overpriced in my opinion because he's never done it properly and held down a spot. Yes, he played for Juve. Oh, hit and miss in my opinion Real Madrid is always going to be hard to get in the team ahead of Ronaldo and Benzema that, that's just standard we're talking about Ronaldo one of the greatest footballers I've ever witnessed in my life and Benzema he always does it for Madrid hence why he's still there um, but can he step up in the Premier League he's already got a couple of goals his movement looks fantastic um, Chelsea fans are quite impressed with that signing the jury's out for me. Um, like I said, I think he's a decent player, but let's see if he can do it for a full season, week in, week out, because he's got some massive boots to fill if he's taken Diego Costa, um, Diego Costa's place. They've also brought in Bakayoko, um, and they've also brought in Rudiger, two players that could have got in the Arsenal starting eleven. So again, I'm looking at that with a little bit of jealousy. I'll be honest. Um, you know, they've also brought in Zappa Costa and Willy Caballero from Man City, the goalkeeper. So, if you look at Chelsea's ins, they've actually spent £182 million. Spent. That's after winning the title. Well, we're poncing around with £48 million. Come on. You now look at their outs, and they've had a hell of a lot of outs, which is why Chelsea fans are slightly worried, in my opinion. Um... The main ones that they've got rid of are Matic, who they've sold to a direct rival up at Manchester. Um, bit of a weird one, but then if you look at the fact that they signed Bakayoko, Matic ain't the, the best player in the world, although he has been very, very good for Chelsea. And again, another one that would have walked in the Arsenal side. They've sold Nathan Aki. They've got rid of him. Very decent player. Very decent player. And they got good money for him as well. And they've also finally got off of their books, Quadrado. So add that to all the other young players they've sold. And in Chelsea, they've got the, the best youth setup in terms of money making out of any football club in the world. They've, they've actually sold, with all the kids that they've let go, They've actually recouped £110 million. And that is without the Oscar money 
from China, the 60 million. So their actual total net spend is 72 million pounds. And in my opinion, they've improved. Chelsea fans might argue against that, but I still see them going for the title this season. So there you go. Um, let's move on to Liverpool, the team that absolutely had our pants down on Sunday. Um, obviously, we all know Oxley chamberlain signed for them yesterday. It is what it is. Um, Mohamed Salah. Well, he ripped us a new arsehole at the weekend, and he's started very, very well. Um, add that to the young lad they brought, Robertson and Solanke. You know, they, they've, they've done a decent window. I wouldn't say they've had the best window, but as it stands... Philippe Coutinho is still a Liverpool player. And like I said, the Spanish transfer window is open till midnight tonight. If they keep hold of Coutinho, then that, that front line is devastating. They can rip anyone apart. The problem with Liverpool is they can't defend. So when they come up against a team that's going to park the bus and hit them on the break, they fall apart. When they come up against a team like us that are stupid enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and try and play them off, the, off their own park, they'll just walk through your left, right and centre. It's going to be an up-and-down season for Liverpool, I think, this season. Um, what we've had in Champions League football now as well. So, yeah, I think they've had a, a decent transfer window. They've spent £80 million in total and they've recouped 30, sorry, £42 million. So they've actually only spent £38 million. Not bad, is it? When you've got Ox and Salah out of that. Decent transfer window, in my opinion. Now let's move on to Man City. The team that everybody says should be investigated for financial fair play. What they're doing is ruining football. Well, before I tell you about their ins and outs, their total net spend is £133 million. £133! That's not a lot of money, is it? Let's be honest. Um, Inns, Mendy, Walker, Silva, Danilo, Douglas Louise, Edison. In my opinion, they're still shit at the back. They're fantastic going forward. They've got all these attacking players. But they're still weak defensively. And they are pinning their hopes on Vincent Company. Now, whilst they have got him fit at the minute, they look good. But at the same time, he ain't going to stay fit all season. He is another Koscielny. He's good, but he ain't good enough. Don't get me wrong. Company was one of the best players defensively we've had in this Premier League. I think he's been a fantastic centre-back. Not anymore. Sorry. They're outs. Iniacho, Boney. And do you remember somebody called Sami and Nasri? They finally got rid of him. So like I say, they've spent £219 million. They've recouped £86 million. Therefore, spending 133. So, now on to their Manchester neighbours, the most successful team ever in the English game. Man United. Um, Man United have signed Lukaku, they've signed Nemanja Matic, and they've signed Lindelof for a grand total of £147 million. Now, what you get with Jose Mourinho is a shopping list early. He likes to get his business done early, similar to like Pep did. Pep got his done early, got his whole squad together and did a whole pre-season with most of his squad. Jose's done the same. Add that to the fact that the signings they got last summer under Jose, he's really starting to mould this squad into his team now and his players. Um, the only real outs that Man United have had are Wayne Rooney, who they've basically given to Everton. Um, and do you remember a, a certain player that was dubbed the next Ronaldo? No, not Memphis Depay. Adnan Yanazai. Do you remember him? The next Ronaldo. All right, mate. We've heard that one a million times. No one's the next Ronaldo. I won't see another Ronaldo in my lifetime. So let's stop dubbing people the next Ronaldo. It's stupid. Um, so they've only actually recouped 7 million quid. Um, so they've spent 140. So when you look at it, the team that have spent the most money, Man United, in my opinion, have the best team. If you add that to what they got last season and what was already at the club. Um, they've also, in my opinion, got the best manager. So now, I'm looking at it thinking, 
They've got the best team, the best manager. They've got to win the league this season. But all will be un unveiled come May. I personally think Man United have got a fantastic chance of winning the title this season. Um, the only team that I can see stopping them is Chelsea. And that is because, firstly, they've got what it takes to win this title. They've done it last season. Man City, I don't think, are good enough defensively. I think they've got massive mistakes in them, especially when John Stones is on the pitch. The most overrated centre-back in this league. Um, then if you look at Spurs, the whole Wembley thing, they'll be up there, but they ain't going to challenge for the title. I think their ambition is just top four. Um, and then the banter club. Um, Arsenal, we, we ain't going to get top six. And then if you add Liverpool in as well, like I said earlier, Liverpool are very similar to Man City. They're fantastic going forward, but they ain't good enough defensively. But we shall see. My signing of the transfer window is Romelu Lukaku. Closely followed by Nemanja Matic. Um, it might sound like I'm a Man United fan for anyone watching this, um, but I think they've done fantastic business. Both of them have absolutely proved their worth in this league already. And Jose's gone in and gone, yep, I'll have both of them. So, fair credit, fair play to them. You know, they've done what it's taken to, to get up there, and I just wish my club would do the same. Before I go, I want to give a shout out, and I don't normally do shout outs. But this guy I'm going to give a shout out to. Go and subscribe to his channel. He's a very good friend of mine. His name's Chris. He runs a channel called Guna Eagle Eye. Um, yeah, please go and follow his channel. Um, he's got some great content. He does previews, reviews. He also does live streams as well um, after games quite often. Um, he's currently on holiday in Amsterdam. So he's probably, um, I don't know whether he likes a bit of weed or not, but he's probably stoned out of his box or eating, um, eating a hash cake or whatever it is they eat over there. So... Yeah, go and follow his channel, show him some love and respect. Anyway, stick your comments down there, smash the subscribe button and smash the hell out of the like button. Laters, peeps.